Hey gang, welcome to Stud Pack. In our previous video, you watched Jordan and I frame our new ceiling in our awesome shop bathroom. I went in my little F-150 pickup truck, ran over to the lumber yard, picked up all the two by eights and five sheets of CDX plywood for our roof deck. I was the cut man outside, Jordan was up top assembling everything and he did a great job. So great, I think he's ready to frame the stud pack house. Don't you think, bud? Yes, sir. Here we go with that one. But once we got that ceiling put in, it got kind of dark in here. So we want to get some light in our bathroom to work. So we grabbed our Brone Bent Light Bluetooth speaker and we temporarily installed it. And we absolutely love that thing. A lot of you have let us know in the comments that you have the same fan and that you love it as much as we do. And a bunch of you have told us that you went ahead and ordered your own online. But check this out. We've got it hot wired with an extension cord and we can't have that. So our goal today is to have this whole bathroom rough wired. So this morning I ran all my errands and picked up everything I needed. I got it all laid out on the tailgate. Let's check it out. I got a 250 foot roll of 12-2 MC cable. MC, metal clad. I've got three nail on boxes, four by four. I think those are two and a quarter deep. And I've got some four gang boxes with a three gang mud ring. Gives me a lot more room inside. We're gonna show you how we install these just a little bit later. Got some mud rings right here. Those are gonna go on these boxes. I also picked up this Klein Tool BX and Armored Cable Cutter. It does an incredible job of cutting this MC cable over here without damaging it. To fasten our MC cable to our framing, I picked up some single hole straps for that size cable. I've got some 3 ace flex connectors right here for MC cable. And I've also picked up a bag of anti-short bushings. But as you can see by the drops of rain on this climb case, it is starting to rain. So let's get all this metal inside. As you can see, we have all our materials laid out right here and it's not that much. So this project should go pretty quickly today. The other way I can move pretty quickly is because I'm organized with all my tools. I'm wearing them in my boulder bags and I love these things. I've been wearing boulder bags for about 10 years. They sent us a couple to try out and they're made in the USA and they are fantastic. Just like I said, we talked about them in a previous video. Boulder Bag saw it and loved it, so they sent us our own discount code. So if you wanna score yourself your own bag, whether you're an electrician, carpenter, framer, or DIYer, head on over to Boulder Bag, use the discount code STUDPACK10, get 10% off your own bag, and get yourself organized. Our first step is to mount all of our boxes. Now we showed you these two out on the tailgate, and they are gonna go right here by the door. So when you walk in, we're gonna have a potential for six switches. I need four, but I gave myself two spares because Jordan always throws in some LED fixtures somewhere right. in the end and I need switches. Well, I thought the door was gonna be on that side. So what's up with that? All right, well, let's talk about the door. So originally the door was gonna swing this way with switches and a built-in makeup center right here for my friend's wife. But we started moving these these uh, pony walls back a little bit, remember? And we have more room here now. So we actually thought it would be better, and a lot of you commented about that if the door swings this way with our switches here. So that's what we're gonna do. Appreciate the comments. So these two boxes by the door, enough room for six switches. Then we're gonna mount our four by four boxes with this mounting flange. We'll have one right here for a ground fault by this vanity. Another one over here for a ground fault by this vanity. And the third one will go behind Jordan and we're gonna replace that old box down there because this one has a lot more room. Now, speaking of this wall where Jordan is, we've got these two windows, remember? And originally we were gonna keep both windows. But when this became a wet wall for the shower, this window went away, we can't save it. And then when Jordan and I were framing this bathroom, we just figured, well, let's just wall it up because it's so much easier to wall it up than to deal with this 50 year old window. But then we read all your comments saying we should keep the window. So then we decided, okay, they're right, we'll keep the window. But then my friends were here this weekend and they said we would rather not have the window for security issues, so the windows are gone. He actually has some brick and some block in the back. I'm just gonna brick them up on the outside. We're done, easy peasy. So our next step is to mount the boxes. Let's get our tape measure and mount them up. No laser? No laser. Let's live a little today. Now this bathroom is gonna obviously have this shower right here with tile from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. And the walls out here are also gonna have tile, kind of a tile wainscoting, about 36 inches tall, which will also act as a backsplash for our vanity right here. It's gonna look epic. Now we don't wanna have to cut our tile around our receptacle. So we're gonna mount the top of the box at 46 inches above the floor, and that's gonna give us plenty of room 
for our tile and our box. Let's mount this one here, one behind Jordan. junction boxes are done. I got one more 4x4 four four to do and that's the one out here. I'm going to replace the original box where the original building wiring is right here. All right, the box is on, but these aren't tight and neither are the set screws, but we wanted to pause and show you something. It is sticking out past the stud a little bit, but that's gonna be fine in this application because what we haven't told you is what we're gonna do with the front of this bathroom. We're actually gonna put plywood on our two by sixes so my buddy can hang anything he wants on this wall, anywhere he wants. And then we're gonna have some kind of facade. We haven't decided on it yet, but it's gonna look like an old gas station or an old storefront, and it's gonna look really cool. It's gonna be pretty unassuming, and then when you walk in this door, boom, like mind blown, right, in right. that bathroom. Totally not expecting what's in there based on what you see out here. Now we can make up the difference with our facade, our wall front, with different thicknesses of mud rings. These are called mud rings. As you can see, this one's deeper than that one. They make ones that are shallower than this, and they make ones that are deeper than that. So we can accommodate anything we do here. So let's tighten all this up, screw it to the stud, and then we're ready for our four gang boxes. That was totally like Boom. Now that one's all done and you may be asking yourself or you may be asking us oh, stud pack why are you using metal boxes you always use plastic well we have to in this situation because it's a commercial building and if you go back and watch what was it during the first or second video we talked about the fact that there is no ground wire in this building built in 1972 50 years ago and the conduit is serving as the ground path now what I'm going to do from this point forward, we're going to have a ground in our MC cable and I'm simply going to bond it to this ground hump right here with a ground screw. A lot of you mentioned in the comments it'd be better to pull a ground all the way back to the panel. But the panel is what, 100 feet that way? Yeah. And I don't know what's between here and there. It could be an hour job, but of our luck it's going to be a 10 day job. So we're gonna ground it and it's gonna be just fine. And we're gonna put a ground fault here that's gonna protect everything downstream. The other beauty of a metal box like this is it's kind of modular. I'm gonna put a single gang mud ring on there just like that. But what if my buddy or Jordan or somebody else says, you know what, it would be better to have two devices there. I just loosen two screws, get a mud ring like that, and I'm all set. Can you do that with a metal box? Plastic. I don't think I can ever remember a time where I messed up and then you corrected me. That's so funny. All the right. tides are turning. Can you do that with a plastic box? Not to my knowledge. Now, about 15 years ago, I did a residential project where I had plastic 4x4 four four boxes and I used metal mud rings like this. And I had to bond the metal mud ring to the ground inside. It's kind of a pain. But I haven't seen that box around in a long time. Maybe it was just a West Coast thing. But I love working with the metal. It's strong and it's adaptable as you see. So all of our 4x4 four four boxes are done. Why don't we hop up here, Jordan, and put these on. Now you'll notice the 4x4 four four boxes had a mounting strap. I couldn't find or they don't make a box like this with a mounting strap. And I can't drill a hole there and mount it. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the holes in the back. There's plenty of those. We're going to put a 2x across the back here and mount this to the 2x and we have all these knockouts in the top and in the bottom for our MC cable. Let's measure that, cut a two by, put that in and mount these boxes. Oh, 
Cool. The smaller screw is tapped, and that's for our ground screw. So you can't attach it to this block with that hole. You gotta use these others. Let's attach this one. And I think what I'll do, I'll actually put the ground screw in and then we'll head to our next step. All right, our boxes are in. And as you can see, I've got a ground screw in each one. And it just threaded through this tapped hole and it pushed itself into this soft pine blocking we have behind there. If this were block or a steel column, we'd have to drill that out to give ourselves room for that ground screw. Because if you remember, come on over here, Jordan, these boxes have a raised ground, so you don't have that problem. But that bigger box does not have a raised ground. But we're good to go there. Now check this out. This is a four gang box and we're putting a three gang mud ring. But just like the one down there, if they wanted to add switches, I could just put a four gang mud ring there and pick up one more switch in each box. And let's talk about this mud ring. This is pretty thick right here. It's kind of like for 5 5H drywall in a commercial building. So we put our box back a little bit. We're always trying to think ahead of our future self, whether it's framing, plumbing, or electric, so we don't cause ourselves a problem. If we'd have put this box flush to the face of the stud, like we did there, this would have been proud of the drywall. So we're back a little bit and we're gonna be great. Now check out this mud ring. It's four gang, remember? Well, it's three gang for a four gang box, but there's also a slot here. You can actually knock these out and put it on a three gang box. And here's one more little detail I wanna show you. We're gonna slide it there and check out the keyhole on this end. The keyhole's kinda of going to the right on the top one and it's kinda of going to the left on the bottom one. That's so you can rotate this on these two slots, push it straight in, then come up and we're good to go. So our next step is to grab the drill and start drilling some holes, but let's take a few minutes and plan our routing. Very first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull power off of this box. That was for the original bathroom and the water fountain that was out there. We're gonna come right up here and feed our two four gang boxes. From here, we're gonna feed all our lights, our vent fan, our pendants, and our wafer LEDs in the ceiling. But we have a couple of ground fault receptacles too. They should be on their own circuit. And check it out. What do I have right here? I have a dedicated circuit that used to be for that massive exhaust fan on the outside of the building. Remember, this used to be the paint booth and that was to pull all the fumes out of there. Now, a couple things that are interesting about this. The original wiring is solid number 12 down here, no ground. And we do have a ground wire here, but did they terminate that properly? Let's go find out. All right, here's the switch box I was talking about. This one is for the lights in the paint booth, and this one was for that exhaust fan. Now this is live, I didn't turn it off yet, but I'm just gonna remove the mud ring. The switches are gonna come with it because they're attached right here. Let's check this out, bud. All right, let's pull this off and let's see where that ground wire goes. They wrapped it around the ground screw and that was it. This goes to the and where I showed you previously, right? That ground wire over by our bathrooms. So it's just bonded to the box. It's not even bonded to the box. It's just attached to the screw. They could have gone one further and attached it to that tapped hole right there and maintained the ground even when it's disconnected like this. So I think I'll do that and that'll be an easy fix. So let's put this back. I'll come back and do that later, but let's keep working on that bathroom. All right, let's drill some holes. I got a nice auger bit in my Milwaukee M18 drill here. And it's just a matter of connecting point A to point B with holes so we can route our MC cable there. So we're gonna drill all our holes first in the whole bathroom, hopefully we don't miss any, and then we're gonna come back and run the cable. Then we're not trying to find this guy all the time. All right, all our holes are drilled. We think we probably missed a couple, but no big deal if we did. And we swept up, always have a nice clean job site. So our next step is to actually start running this cable. Check it out right here. Just leave it in the plastic. That's what you're gonna do. And you're just gonna pull it out from the middle. Ah. Oh, did it get you too? And just pull it out from the middle, just like that. So you don't have a big mess. And you're gonna unreel it so it's nice and straight. Now, how are we gonna cut it? Got this Klein tool I showed you. Let me unwrap it and we'll show you how it works. 
So here's the cutter. Got a little blue blade right there, basically a rotary hacksaw. And as I squeeze, I'm gonna grab the cable with that dog and the blade's gonna come down and cut through the jacket. Let's run this cable and we'll show you how it works. So I'm just pulling it out of the spool as I go. I'm keeping it straight like I talked about. In other words, I don't want a bunch of kinks in it, right? And I'm gonna get it up to this box and then we'll cut it to length and then we'll strip it. All right, that's good on that end. Let's come over here. All right, my right thumb is about where I want to cut it. I'm going to transfer to my left thumb. And I want to use the lineman as a gauge. It's a lot of wire, but I need a lot of wire. I'm going to cut it here. Boom. And cut the armor jacket there. And you'll be able to tell when you've cut through. It starts to spin. You did not touch the wire at all. Little twist, and I'm done. Check that out, bud. Get a close-up of that. See what a nice job it did? All right, we're going to put our ends on it and terminate them in the boxes. So here's our anti-short bushing. It's going to protect the wiring from this sharp end of that aluminum. This is aluminum, not steel. So you can get it in steel. I think you can still get it in steel. See how that works? Covers up the end. I'm going to cut this off. I don't need it anymore. Then I'm going to slide my connector on. Let's take the lock nut off first, slide that right on there, just like that. And when this red tab comes through, then the inspector knows he's got a visual that you put the anti-short bushing on the end of your MC cable. Now we'll tighten down these two screws and we're ready to terminate it in our box. We're all made up here. I'll connect the wires later. Our next step is to secure it to the stud and we're using these one hole straps for 3 ace flex or BC cable. They're one hole strap. I'm going to screw it to the stud right there. All right, we've got power to our bottom box. Now, before you get down below in the comments, I am going to connect these two boxes with short pieces of EMT right here. I just don't have the connector I need. So we're going to run all the flex, all the MC today. I can come back tomorrow, remove these four screws, lift this box up, and install those pieces of conduit so I have a raceway between the two. Then I then I have all kinds of options, right? I can do anything I want. But for right now, let's come off of this top box from here to our exhaust fan, and then another one up into the ceiling for our power supply for our LED wafers, and then we're done with this side of the room, right? Yep. Because our exhaust fan just needs power. It doesn't need a switch leg because the remote or the switch talks to the box wirelessly. After that, we'll do our ground faults with this guy. Right there. By the light. Yep, just come on across. Right. Far or close? Can we make that bend for the close one? We're going to this box or this box? Top box. All right, gang, Jordan and I finished running all the MC cable in the ceiling. This is going to be a switch leg for our pendants. And this is a switch leg for our halos. Come on down here to the box and you can see we even labeled it. Got a little piece of the sheathing from some 14.2. Put halo on there for that one. That one says pendants. And this one says 120 volts to the fan. So we just have to get power to the fan and then the switch that goes here communicates with the fan because it's battery powered. So we don't really have a switch leg going to the fan. But I can't keep going because I actually forgot a few things. I forgot that we had to connect these two with some EMT so we can get power here feed it through and power up this box. And I forgot the boxes for the pendant lights, totally spaced on that, plus a couple other things. So we're actually gonna end the video right here. Now, typically what we would do in a situation like this is, we would go back to the store the next morning and turn it into a two day project of videoing, right? And have one video that takes us two days to film. But there's a couple disadvantages with that. Number one, the video gets delayed a day. 
And we don't want to do that to you guys. We want to put out as many videos as we can. And the second thing that happens with Jordan and I when we do something like that is we're trying to condense a video into like 25 minutes. So the second day, we kind of gloss over a few things, a lot of the details actually, that we actually want to show you. But we want to make the video short enough so you'll watch it and not an hour long. So this is going to be a win-win for both. You get more videos and we get to show more details on the next video as we finish all the electrical. So if you guys are on board with that, let us know below in the comments. Hit that like button. That way we know you like it. And while you're right there by the like button, get yourself some Kleins, some MC cable, run it to that like button, smash it for us, ask a question, drop a comment, please subscribe, and we will see you in the next Stud Pack video.